tuning in to the Embodied Astrology Podcast. I'm Renee Sills. I'm a consulting astrologer, embodiment educator, and the creator of Embodied Astrology. Embodied Astrology is much more than these horoscopes in our podcast. It's actually a movement that is full of people who are interested in the ways that astrology can help us more deeply embody our earthly and universal intelligence at this time. We offer ongoing classes, workshops, trainings, and community process spaces where we practice astrology as a language for living. We blend astrology with art, science, healing methodologies, and activist strategies. We hold space for ourselves and each other to expand and explore symbolism, mythology, and meaning, to queer, unpack, and evolve this ancient technology in service of our present needs and future potentials. If this sounds like something you've been looking for, or if my readings resonate for you and you want to take them to the next level, I hope you'll join us sometime. Stick around after your horoscope and I'll tell you a bit more about what we offer, how we work, and why I think embodied astrology might be a great space for you too. If this work benefits you and you want to help me keep giving these monthly readings for free, or help us keep all of our offerings available with financial accessibility and sliding scale, please take a moment right now to like, follow, and subscribe to our channels. This season's horoscopes are intuitive offerings for each sign of the zodiac. May they serve and support you in some way. Listen for your sun, moon, and rising signs. Remember that not everything is for everyone. Take what works, leave the rest, and make the meaning that's most meaningful for you. Thanks so much for being here. Now, on to your horoscope. Hello, Aries. Welcome to Scorpio season. This reading is for all Aries identified folks and all of your Aries placements, definitely including sun, moon, and rising. Now, Aries, you might be familiar with some basic astrology that has to do with the relationship between signs and planets. And in the astrological, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Map, in the strategy, the technology of it, Um, There are correlations, and Aries, as a sign, is connected to the planet Mars as a symbol. And the planet Mars is also connected to Scorpio as a sign. So both Aries and Scorpio are said to be ruled by Mars in a traditional uh, rulership of Hellenistic or tropical astrology. And this is an interesting setup for Aries identified people because Scorpio holds a place in your chart that is not always easy to look at and sometimes you would really rather not. And there's some basic tension between Aries and Scorpio in the ways that both of them have to do with Mars as a quality. Now Mars as an energetic quality in astrology is associated with our basic vital energy, with our force and what we do with our force. It has to do with our desire and our will. It is uh, related to anything that activates us, whether that is being activated by pleasure and wanting something or whether that's being activated by fear or uh, needing to fight or defend or protect. Being activated is being interested in something. And you can be really interested in something that you don't like. Uh, You probably know the experience very well. Um, Maybe there's someone that you just think is a real, um, you know, bummer or something. You're not into that person and they said some stupid thing. And then you spend like every day for an entire week obsessed about that person and thinking about them and you're going to like tell them this thing. You know, that's you being interested in something that you don't like. And we can get fixated on what brings distress into our systems because distress is arousing as is pleasure. And so this is some of the weird relationship between Aries and Scorpio. Scorpio is an energy that is uh, a watery kind of energy. Aries is a fire energy. You want to move out and up. You want to express. You want to be big. You want to be bold. You want to make shit happen. Scorpio needs you to come down and in. It needs you to... uh, recognize that you cannot see what you cannot see. And when you cannot see something, 
you have to sense, you have to attune, you have to get really quiet so that you can access your intuition. And Scorpio energetically knows a lot about patience. It knows a lot about waiting for the right time. It is an energy that knows how to stalk something, S-T-A-L-K. Um, and Aries is an energy that definitely wants to be a warrior, but sometimes you're hasty. Sometimes Aries energy uh, moves too fast. It doesn't look before it leaps. A lot of you are hitting your heads all the time because you're headstrong. And so Scorpio is here as an ally for you to learn about patience and to learn to wait. And in the ways that you have to learn about patience and waiting, you also have to develop capacity to work something through, to process it. And process and transformation are really important keywords for Scorpio. Scorpio needs us to penetrate through density so that we can get to the core, so that we can see underneath what is superficial and really resonate with what is deep. This season is giving you a big dose of that. And when you are held in places of uh, necessary, I'm gonna say it could feel like confinement, when you are held in situations that don't have an easy out, where you feel frustrated, where you feel stuck, where you feel scared, where you feel all kinds of things that are hard to feel, like grief and terror and disappointment and longing. When you feel stuck because you want something so much but you're just not getting it, but you don't know how to move. These are kinds of feelings that might uh, really be taking your attention in Scorpio season. I think a lot of you have a, a big sense of weight on top of you right now. It could actually feel like at any moment throughout your day, you have like 50 tons of concrete just being poured over your body and you're like, Ugh, how do I get out of bed? Ugh, how do I go to work? Ugh, how do I deal with this person? Ugh, how do I deal with myself? And a lot of you might be feeling that the day-to-day -day mundane concerns that need you to get out of bed, that need you to go to work, that need you to deal with that person, that need you to deal with yourself, it's, you're like, what's the point? There might be a frustration for you and a feeling of like, what the fuck is the point of all this? And a lot of you, it's like you wanna get to the thing that's the point. Aries, this is the point. The point right now is what do you do with the sensations of your mind when your mind is in a dark space? And a dark space might be a space of unknown. It might be a space of terror and fear. It might be a space of grief or longing. It might be a space of uh, the veils are thin in Scorpio season. You feel that there's a lot of energy out there and you don't know if you trust it and you might feel affected, and you might feel like you gotta keep your guard up. And I think a lot of you don't want, it's like you wanna move. You wanna like go towards something that feels like it's gonna brighten your spirit and expand your life. And I'm telling you that you will, but in order to actually get there and to get to that feeling that you wanna have, there's a deep dive that needs to happen first. So, over the course of Scorpio season, there is there is some like fraught energy for you because a lot of you are gonna hear this and you're gonna remember it for like 30 seconds and then you're gonna go back into your life and you're like, I'm going to that thing that's making me happy. Like you're like, that's the way. And you're gonna forget the thing that I said and you're gonna be urgent about it and you're gonna feel agitated and you're gonna be like, how do I get there? How do I get there? And you're gonna be hasty. And you're gonna spin yourself in circles because this is a period of time that is kind of like, it won't let you move forward yet. There is a moving forward, but then you're gonna get pulled back. Now, 
if you take note of this reading, then maybe you won't do that so much and you can be with the parts of you that are really longing to get to that whatever it is where things are going to feel better and hold that part really tenderly and promise that part that you will get there. It might not be at exactly the time or exactly the place or exactly in the way that you imagined that it was going to be, but the quality that you're looking for will arrive. You are going to get there. You will experience it. And now what is required of you is to actually really take on Scorpio's lessons of stillness, perception, penetrating consciousness, and psychological astuteness so that you can grow in your energetic and spiritual capacity. And that is going to give you something that you need for this adventure that you're trying to go on. As we get into the month of November, I'm going to say leading up to November, a lot of you are, you're going through it. There, I'm, I don't know how to say it. You are going through it. There are like a lot of feelings. There are big things that are beyond your personal control. You feel very um, enmeshed and entangled and affected by your relationships maybe by specific relationships or specific circumstances and relationships. This isn't a bad thing necessarily. It's just that you're sensitive and some of you are really, really open to someone or something. And it's like taking a lot of your energy and it's, it's really consuming uh, for you. Now, these kinds of feelings get stronger and stronger and stronger as we get towards the new moon on November 1st. And the new moon on November 1st is a very deep, dark new moon. This is a new moon that is bringing big death energy. Now, big death energy does not mean that everybody around you is going to die. Please don't take it like that. It does not mean your own death. Big death energy is big life energy. It is big alchemy energy. It is big transformation energy. And there are all kinds of reflections available right now, anywhere you want to look. That could be in the news with the collective. That could be with your relationships. It could be in your own heart. There are all kinds of reflections for you uh, about what you cannot hold on to in a solid way. You cannot hold on to this moment. It's already gone. I'm sorry. You cannot hold on to your youth. You are aging. You cannot hold on to other people. They are their own people. You cannot hold on to that idea of what your future was going to be when you were 15 because the future has already changed a million times. You cannot hold on to your perfect plans. I'm sorry. <sighs> In the surrender there is a sacrifice, right? You, you are making something sacred. You are putting something down. And my feeling is that a lot of you are mourning this. And, and, and it's like, oh, God, there's, oh, there's so much feeling. And those feelings need to be felt. <sighs> Give them the space and the time. Something happens frequently when a big layer of feeling gets to be felt which is that afterwards there's all kinds of new space available. And I think that a lot of you, as we move towards the new moon, you are like really in the water. And then as the new moon uh, turns into the crescent moon and as it moves towards the full moon on November 15th, you are rising above the waves and it's like you see the sun and you see the sky and you see the horizons. And you're, some of you are having this thought or this feeling around that time that you're never going to get pulled underneath again. You've like dealt with something and now it's in the past. But the nature of time right now is very back and forth. And so you did a layer, you dove under a wave, there are going to be more waves coming over the next 
months through the next year, all through 2025. But especially, you know, we're thinking right now around some of these like decisions you're trying to make about how you're going to feel better soon. Um, over the next couple of months, there are going to be some waves uh, they, that are going to move through your life and move through you that might need you to change your plans a little bit. It might need you to adjust your expectations. And there's something that's coming up for me here around your personal pleasure and, and like the ways that you want to grow. And there might even be ways where you're like, but I'm trying to grow, like you're saying, Renee, like I'm trying to get quiet. I'm trying to listen to my spirit. I'm trying to do something that looks like me. Um, you know, I don't know, maybe you want to go somewhere. Maybe you want to go on a trip. Maybe there's something new that you're trying to learn. There might be a project you're trying to start. There might be a romantic kind of interest that you're like, is this going to get off the ground? Maybe. Um, it's like there are these feelings of something, oh, something wants to grow. I want to go there. And the feeling that I have is you want to go in that direction to deepen. But depth is coming for you first. <laughs> And, and I really want you to trust that you're going to be able to get to where you're trying to go on an energetic level, on a spiritual and soul level, for sure. I guarantee. But on a physical, this lifetime level, you have to be patient right now. And you have to allow for these periods of uncertainty and difficulty and adjustment and readjustment. Now, in this span of time between the new moon and the full moon, it's like the the clouds part and you're like, oh, I feel better. And this is lovely. If, if, if that is in case how some of you are feeling, you know, there might be this sense of clarity around, okay, you know, I've made peace with this. That means that I'm going to do this thing. I just want you to keep your options open. I don't want you to listen to what I'm saying and make any hard and fast judgments about, oh, this thing I'm trying to do will not work. This thing I'm trying to do will work. It's like, you don't know, actually. And you have to kind of be there for the ride. And there is this feeling of you need to be intentional and adaptable at the same time. So what is it that you have recently had some kind of idea about and you're like, that's my path of growth. Like, that's where I'm going to go get strong. That's where I'm going to go have fun. That's where I'm going to go really feel like myself. That's where I'm going to go be able to express myself or have this experience that's like so enlivening for me. There's somewhere in your life, could be person, place thing, that person, place project, you know, that you're like, you've been feeling that way about, that from now, uh, at least through January, maybe into February and March, there's this back and forth around. And the back and forth does not mean that the thing won't happen or can't happen, but it means that you need to hold it with an open palm. It means that you need to surrender and sacrifice your attachments to it happening right now. Put it down. The attachment part, not the actual situation. It might happen, but you have to hold it with an open palm. You have to hold it with an open palm. If you grasp on the thing, you're going to have a lot of anxiety. You, you're going to end up making plans that then you have to go back and like totally rework and rejig. So it's best if, if you, if you have to make plans, if you're trying to figure out how to move forward with something. Um, try to set things up with the expectation that something could change. So let's say you're trying to take a trip. Spend the extra money to purchase the travel insurance and the refundable tickets. Let's say you are trying to get a project off the ground. Work with your collaborators to have an idea of the next several months of this project growth that gives a lot of space and time for process and reflection and refinement. And, and don't assume that you know what the outcome will be now. If you're trying to make a plan, 
Um, what can you do to communicate or put things in place that will let everybody know that your plans might change? They might necessarily need to change. And please, you know, make the adjustments that need to be made now in order for you to keep your options open. And in the keeping your options open, there is some reassessment and rethinking that you're going to be doing about what it is that you want to be doing. And so part of what might happen during this period of time that feels so frustrating is that other opportunities might come in or pieces of information might come in that then are better and actually more aligned than what you thought last week. And if you had made a solid plan, this is the thing I'm saying, if you had made a plan, you're like, I'm definitely going to be there. But then this new opportunity comes and you're like, oh, ugh, that's actually what I want to do. Well, now you have to deal with like this whole plan that you've already made and maybe other people who are expecting and da, da, da. But if you set up the plan and you're like, you know, I think I'm going to do this thing, but I'm not sure if I'll be able to. So how can we figure out a kind of temporary plan that gives me flexibility to change if I need to change? And then something else comes along and you're like, oh, that's actually better for me. And then it's like, because you did that for yourself, then all the doors are opening and you're like, boom, 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 boom. It's so easy now to do the thing that I want to do. But the thing that I want to do now is different than the thing I wanted to, wanted to do then. That's the feeling that I have for you but it requires you to be patient and to work with yourself, to work with what happens for you because of all the things that are coming up and getting in the way of your plans. And this definitely includes emotions. Fire signs in general sometimes are emotionally challenged. <laughs> Speaking as, you know, a person with like a gazillion planets in fire. I can speak intelligently about other people's emotions. I've read tons of psychology books. I do all kinds of trainings. I think I have a lot of natural empathy. When it comes to me dealing with my own emotions, oh my God. <laughs> I've had to train and practice so much and I have to train and practice so much because my fire being wants to just keep it moving. And sometimes something actually needs me to be with it because the feeling has some intelligence that my mind hasn't been able to integrate yet. There might be some big feelings coming up uh, in Scorpio season for you. And these feelings could be yours, they could be other people's. Most likely it's a combination of everybody's feelings and Possibly it's how you feel about other people's feelings and what that then does to your feelings. And you're like, oh, wow, this is an entanglement. And then you have to be there for that. Um, there may be a lot of feelings right now about things that are fully outside of your control. The world at large, right? Other people. Um, time, right? Just, ugh. Be with the feelings. The feelings have something to teach you. But don't let the feelings paralyze you. Focus on what is truly valuable and most of essence in terms of what it is that you're trying to move towards. And work what's happening internally in your inner alchemy so that you can get closer and closer to the truth of what it is that you're trying to embody, materialize, realize, move towards. Don't, don't abandon it. Let this period of time help you focus. Now, as you sort through all of this, the relational landscape around you is changing. And your future opportunities are radically changing. What is happening for you in your life right now is shifting how you are moving into the future. And this includes all kinds of ideas that you have for your own personal growth and development. This includes all your dreams and desires about life in general, other people in the world. 
This includes relationships in a high level macro kind of way, community, friendships, you as part of the human experiment. Um, this definitely includes any ways that you might be trying to work with organizations or groups of people or movements. In order for you to do what you are meant to do over the course of the next several decades, like the foreseeable future, you have to clarify somehow energetically and emotionally uh, with yourself. And the, the big message that I'm getting here right now is that there are important lessons that you're learning about how to work skillfully in the intermixing space between uh, subtle energies, between you and other people. And in the emotional, empathic, compassionate sensitivity spaces where you are feeling affected and where other people are feeling affected by you. And a lot of those spaces are very hard to speak to because they are more emotional and psychic and energetic than they are mental. It can be very hard to try and describe a vibe. Um, and it can be even harder to try and like make it do something. And that's a place where a lot of people get stuck in their relationships is they uh, try and get gross <laughs> when they need to get subtle. And right now you want to get real subtle. You want to be able to sense what element of this is yours? What element of this is theirs? Where do your feelings come into contact with their feelings? How do their feelings influence and impact your feelings? How do your feelings bleed into their environment and become part of their experience, which then they're going to have a feeling about, and then it's going to come into your environment and be part of your experience and you're going to have a feeling about. And my feeling right now is that you are trying to take response ability for your mind and your emotional and energetic body because you're recognizing the ways that you get entangled and enmeshed and impacted and affected and the ways that you are also unconsciously and subconsciously leaking out and affecting and communicating in ways that you don't mean to, or maybe even sometimes being manipulative in ways that you don't actually want to be. And you're recognizing how your feelings influence your thoughts and your thoughts influence your words and your words then shape feelings. And you want to clean it up is my feeling in Scorpio season. It's like you want to do this work around skillful discernment. What is yours? What belongs to someone else? Of course, they're overlapping, entangled, and enmeshed and affecting each other. And where is the responsibility that you have? And how can you take up that work generatively, generously, um, in many ways towards your own ultimate means? And so here we get back to this feeling of you're moving towards something that is, is exciting, is adventurous, is pleasurable, is about your own growth. And something in this quality of time wants to show you on an energetic level, on an implicit intrinsic level, before you ever do any action of trying to get somewhere where you're trying to be, something is trying to show you what blocks you from that radiant, courageous, boldness, sense of adventure all the time. And I think what blocks you is the same as what blocks all of us. You know, it's fear, it's insecurity, it's the inability to actually communicate what you're feeling and work with discernment and skill, um, not take other people personally, as you also really care and tend for your own piece of the pie. Okay, Aries, I hope any or all of that resonated and feels supportive for you at this time. If it did, please stick around for a couple of minutes. I want to tell you a little bit more about current astrology and what embodied astrology is up to because I think a lot of what we're doing might be really uh, great for you and might be a good place for you to tune in and connect and work 
the astrology of the moment in company and community. Thanks for listening to your Scorpio season reading. If this horoscope resonated for you, please show your support by liking, following, and subscribing, and by sharing our work with your friends and community. These are the number one ways to support this work and help us grow. If this work benefits you, I also hope you'll consider working more deeply with us at Embodied Astrology. Because we time our classes, workshops, and events with current transits, we're always offering to the present moment, and we are usually right on time. Every month and throughout the seasons, we engage the creative, experimental, and experiential aspects of current astrology. And our work is always given with an ethos of generosity and accessibility. Our classes, workshops, and series are available with scholarships and by sliding scale, and no one is turned away for lack of funds. We do rely on your support and presence to keep us going, though. Please help sustain and support our work by making a one-time or recurring donation, or becoming a member, or sign up for one of our current or upcoming offerings. This season, I hope you'll join me for Somatic Space, which is a class I offer every Monday where we prepare ourselves to work with the astrology of the week ahead through gentle healing body practices, breathwork, meditation, and visualization. You can drop in once to try it out, or if you become a member, you'll also get access to the past classes video archive and Tea Time, which is a monthly conversation space where we learn and share how astrology is moving through our lives. Both Tea Time and Somatic Space are great ways to get to know me a bit better and for me to get to know you. Our conversations and practices are always rich, vast, and heartfelt, and the connections and community that build in these spaces is so deeply nourishing and incredibly special. In early December of this year, Mars will station retrograde in Leo. Over the course of the following three months until next February, Mars will retrocess or retrograde from Leo to Cancer, where it stations direct at the end of next February. Between now and December, the retrograde influence of Mars is increasing as we move through what's called a shadow period. This is when a planet is traveling direct over a zodiacal degree range that will be imminently revisited by its upcoming retrograde. When Mars is retrograde, especially in the signs of Leo and Cancer, we all need to work with our basic instincts and impulses more attentively. These are times when small misunderstandings can escalate quickly into large conflicts and when anger, aggression, and desires that are unconscious or unprocessed in our individual and collective experiences can surface suddenly and sometimes quite dramatically. These are also times when we can grow immensely and develop our individual and collective strengths, courage, capacities, and what I think of as our deep spiritual will. Ultimately, this is a transit that wants to help us use our power with more consciousness and also up-level our emotional and energetic awareness, especially around areas of conflict, impact, and intent. Sorting through the stuff of conflict is messy work. No matter what the conflict is, there is always more than what's visible on the surface. Since our personal and interpersonal experiences can't get separated from the institutional, environmental, and ideological, it can be profoundly overwhelming and hard to move towards conflict transformation when most of our issues are totally complex and entangled on multiple levels. In order to prepare for this transit, our faculty member, Ramon Parrish, is offering a three-week series, November 7th through 21st, called Constellations of Conflict. In this series, we'll do the work of investigating the intersections of conflict as they emerge in our individual bodies, interrelationships, shared spaces, and the larger world. Through the lens of astrology, we'll use our natal placements, synastry, and transit timing as guides. We'll explore how current astrology and this Mars retrograde can help us navigate, engage, and skillfully meet this time of profound conflict and transformation here on Earth. This Scorpio season features a grand trine between the Sun in Scorpio, Mars in Cancer, and Saturn and Neptune in Pisces. This season, more than most, is a time of deep water and intense feelings. In astrospeak, water always asks us to move down and inwards and to get in touch with our emotional bodies and internal experiences. 
Working with the wisdom of water also assists in working effectively with earth. When we can craft and create containers that hold space for feelings to be as they are, we'll naturally find our way into flow, and what we don't need we can let go in ways that nourish, cleanse, hydrate, and sustain. Over the weekend of November 9th and 10th, Embodied Astrology facilitators Gabs404 and Janata Petrus will hold two watery, earthy sessions to make space for the following week's Taurus full moon. In November 9th's Nebula Lab, Gabs will be joined by Dani D'Amelia, a non-binary, eco-trans feminist artist and educator whose work with radical tenderness and hospicing modernity invites intimacy into the layers of life right now. This is an opportunity to be with the immensity of the moment, get grounded in our bodies, politicized in our healing practices, and held in our humanity by the larger cosmic web of inseparability. The following day, November 10th, Janata Petrus returns for the Taurus full moon edition of her monthly Artistic Alchemy series. In these classes, we orient with a full moon axis in our charts in order to reflect on our creative devotions and the realities of surviving in a capitalistic world that is filled with uncertainty and possibility. We practice staying grounded with the rhythms of astrology and spirit, channeling the wisdom of cosmic alignment, and opening to celestial guidance from our ancestors as support for living creatively through times of unknown. Following Janata's artistic alchemical opening, Sherry Taylor and I will co-lead a special council session the following weekend on Saturday, November 17th, which is the day after the full moon, where we'll focus specifically on astrology and ancestral attunement through working with the symbolism of Saturn. Sherry has been faculty at Embodied Astrology for over two years now, where her work in deepening and expanding Saturn's mythic and archetypal symbolism has yielded a powerful path of devotional practice. Our co-led session initiates a new cycle of Saturnian devotion, which Sherry will lead through two subsequent sessions, culminating on the December solstice. You can find more information about everything and everyone I just mentioned in the show notes or through the study section at embodiedastrology.com. If you can't make our live events, but you still want to participate, your registration will always include recording access. I certainly hope to see you soon over Scorpio season in one of our spaces. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for listening and engaging. I'm wishing you all the best in this season and beyond. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.